beautiful. You can take a photo of me. It's in photos and videos that Ella Kissy Deborah lives on. And her short life is hugely significant. Because in the first ruling of its kind, pollution from busy roads, a coroner found today, contributed to the nine-year-old's premature death in 2013. In the plain words of his coroner's report, Philip Barlow said Ella's medical cause of death was acute respiratory failure, severe asthma and air pollution. Ella herself has been described as the canary in the coal mine of a public health crisis. Poisonous fumes round the South East London streets near Ella's home were constantly higher than legal limits. This is me. Normally bubbly and vivacious, Ella began to suffer seizures as her asthma worsened. She was rushed to hospital 27 times in three years, before one night her body just gave up. Ella's mother, a retired head teacher, has spent the year since her death fighting to establish the truth. Failure to reduce pollution helped kill her daughter. Yes, this was about my daughter getting air pollution on the death certificate, which we finally have. And we've got the justice for her, which she so deserved. But also it's about other children still as we walk around our city of high levels of air pollution. And I hope you heard what the coroner said, that there are still illegal levels of air pollution now as we speak. So this matter is far from over. Ella's mother is one of many demanding a new Clean Air Act. There are busy roads across the country, just like the South Circular here, not far from where Ella lived, where pollution is, as we heard today, potentially deadly. The implications of today's findings go way beyond the streets of South London. In the capital, the ultra-low emission zone, which penalises the most polluting vehicles, is being expanded, but not until next October, eight years after Ella's death. It'll widen from the current central congestion charge area up to, but not including, the north and south circulars where Ella lived. The Mayor of London said today other families can't be allowed to suffer the same heartbreak as Ella's, while her local council, Lewisham, called for a national commitment to tackle air pollution. Looking across the population, it's estimated that there are around 36,000 early deaths every year which are linked to pollution. Many of those will be lung disease or heart disease. They're unlikely to be young people, but there's still the problem that breathing pollution when you're young could leave you at risk of health problems in the future. Campaigners who've been fighting Heathrow expansion on carbon emission grounds are turning their attention to roads and the government's £27 billion national road investment strategy, which includes controversial projects like the Lower Thames Crossing and the Stonehenge Tunnel. Ella's case is a tragic one. And I think what it shows is that we need to have a sea change when it comes to transport planning and development. Um, and for road building, it really should be the straw that breaks the camel's back. We need to be taking funding out of road building and investing in cleaner, safer and healthier alternatives. The government said today that air pollution has gone down over the last decade, with emissions of nitrogen oxides falling by a third. But their thoughts tonight are with Ella's family and friends. None of this, of course, will bring her back. The question now is what today's ruling might do for others at risk from pollution. Well, earlier I spoke to Rosamond Adu Kissy Deborah, Ella's mother, who you saw in that report, and I asked her what this verdict meant to her personally. It means, finally, I have the justice that I've been seeking for for almost eight years now. And it was absolutely overwhelming in court. And the fact I got to share it with Ella's siblings as well and for them who have now spent half of their life without their sister and I could see how visibly moved they were. What kind of toll has it taken on you as a family and you mentioned Ella's siblings there. How we lost Ella was so brutal. All those hospital visits, all the resuscitation on that tiny body of hers and at times she was scared, I was scared. You never knew where the next seizure was coming from. There were cardiac arrests that people found out for today. It was absolutely horrendous. And emotionally, it does take its toll. You know, 
when you become a parent, you, you never envisage you'll be resuscitating your own child. And even for the medics, they don't want to see a child in that situation. And one minute she was well, and then the next minute she, she wasn't. And I think the difficulty was nobody knew exactly why then. And now you have secured justice for Ella. How will you, and the campaign that you've so doggedly fought, how will you carry on in terms of trying to change government policy on pollution? There is a lack of understanding about the impact of air pollution on the human body. And I think people don't realise how quickly, especially a child under the age of 10, can become severely ill. So there is a lot of ed education to be had. And because it, it is invisible, people don't take it seriously. So we have an enormous job to do, but there are many other campaigners out there and I'm sure they will help us raising awareness about this very important issue. So just tell me a little bit more about how you'd like the law to change and for that to be a, a sort of memorial to Ella. I believe that breathing clean air is a human right and this needs to be enshrined in law. Any law that comes in in my late daughter's name then it should be to save lives, future lives. My hope is that no child will ever go through what she went through. She suffered greatly, and that's never going to change. No one should have to do that, based on the air which they breathe. And just finally, Rosamond, you have secured justice for Ella today, but it tragically won't bring her back, of course. How do you remember your daughter now? I will remember her kindness, her smile, um, and the fact that she lives on through her siblings, that there are some similarities between them. Um, I, I, our house will forever be quiet. It's not as noisy as when she was around. But, you know, I carry her within my heart and she will always be with me. And I'm incredibly proud of her. Um, she was only nine. And today she has achieved an incredible feat. And... She wanted her siblings and her friends especially to always remember her. And I hope today the world, people around the world who are breathing filthy air. And I feel she sacrificed her life, but I hope that um, they will all be breathing cleaner air in, in the future. Rosamond Adukasi, Deborah, thanks so much for talking to me.